This connection of two transistors is a pretty common transistor or pretty common configuration that you find in integrated circuit design. It's known as a current mirror, and it's probably as close as we're going to see to an ideal current source. An ideal current source is a source that gives the same current regardless of the voltage across it. And even in these applications, it's a constant current over a relatively narrow range of voltages. But we're asked to determine the value of R2 that will bias this transistor Q2 right at the border between the triode and the saturation regions. In other words, right at the point where V uh, DS on this second transistor is equal to VGS minus VT. Now, we're told that these two transistors are identical so that the physical parameters of both of them will be the same. This is the same transistor that we did in the previous example where we determined that the current through here, I sub D, was 72 microamps. We also determined the value of R to be 13.9 kilo ohms. Now, where these two transistors are different is that in this transistor, it was biased so that the voltage here was 0.8 volts. And because the drain and the gate are tied together, that tells us then that VGS in this is 0.8 volts which means that the voltage here, since they're tied together, the voltage here, VGS on Q2, is also going to be 0.8 volts. And we know that V sub T is 0.5 volts, minus 0.5 volts. So that tells us then that the voltage on this transistor at the drain is going to be 0.3 volts. So you'll notice that the, the uh, drain to source voltages are going to be different in these two, although the gate to source voltages are the same. Now in doing this calculation, we're going to assume that we can neglect the early effect, so lambda equals zero. And because of that, the current then for the non-early effect transistor is I sub D is equal to one half K sub N prime W over L times V G S minus Vt quantity squared. And once again, neglecting the early effect, we know then that the current I sub d is independent of the drain to source voltage, Vds. So, and, and let's, let's be explicit, I sub d then is only dependent upon Vgs and other quantities that are um, physical parameters of the transistors. Because these two transistors are identical, the physical parameters are the same. And because the gates are tied together and the sources are both grounded, VGS is the same. So the current flowing through here, I sub D, call it ID2, will be the same as the current flowing through here, which we've already calculated to be 72 microamps. That's where this concept of the current mirror comes from. This transistor with a fixed VDS and a VGS establishes a current and this current over here will be the same because it has the same gate to source voltage and they're identical. We're now prepared to calculate R2. We know the voltage here, VDS with S grounded, is 0.3 volts. And again that's less than over here but that's not the point. We want this to be 0.3 volts, so we now need to determine the size of R2 that will give us that 0.3 volts given the current is the 72 microamps. So we can go ahead and we can calculate R2 then is equal to VDD, which is 1.8 volts, minus the voltage here, which is 0.3 volts, divided by the 72 microamps. And we do that calculation, we get then that R2 is equal to 20.83 kilo ohms. And we need to ask ourselves, does that make sense? Well, if the currents are the same, then the larger resistor would result in a larger voltage drop, which should then give us a voltage here less than the voltage here. And sure enough, that's exactly what we've got. We do expect R2 to be bigger than R than this resistor here because the voltages at the two drains are different voltages.